Ladies and gentlemen, hey, hi, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. As we know, we just got the biggest Warzone weapon tuning update in history. We saw so many different weapon buffs, weapon nerfs, all sorts of various adjustments. And specifically when it comes to the assault rifle category, a lot of things were shaken up. We saw quite a few really good rifles nerfed a bit. We saw some other weapons adjusted in other various ways. And right now, one of the most asked questions that I'm getting is, Zach, what are the best rifles? How different is the rifle meta now compared to before all this weapon tuning? And today we are breaking down the top five best rifles in Warzone currently. What are gonna be the best uh, both in terms of just overall efficiency, but more so also in those medium and longer range fights where you're predominantly using a lot of these rifles as is. Of course, we have a few rifles that can be good up close, but predominantly they are meant for those ranged fights. And today we are breaking down the best of the best when it comes to that. So as we break it all down, if you enjoy the video at any point, or if you find it helpful, let me know by dropping a like on it, it would be seriously appreciated. And of course, if you are new to the channel or if you haven't already subscribed, this is the place to be for everything going on in COD. If you want to stay up to date with the latest updates, intel, loadout tips, and everything else in between, feel free to subscribe with your notifications turned on. Now, first up, coming in at number five, the fifth best AR in Warzone right now, I would say is probably the CR-56 AMAX. Uh, unfortunately, despite some of the other rifles, primarily Cold War rifles, receiving quite a few nerfs with this update, uh, the AMAX was also nerfed, but it was also buffed at the same time. So the AMAX sort of stays just as efficient as it was before, but in different areas, if that makes any sense. This is still the best Modern Warfare rifle in the game, in my opinion. You are still going to have a very, very competitive TTK with this thing, but of course, it's not the AMAX that we once knew. It's not the AMAX that we all know and love from before, where this thing was the number one go-to rifle for season on top of season on top of season. But now it is still very competitive, especially if you're able to land a headshot or two, that's going to make this thing's TTK incredibly, incredibly good. And the good thing about that is we've used the Amex for so long right now, uh, a lot of players are just naturally comfortable with this weapon, meaning landing those headshots and staying on the chest and head, which is really going to give you that best TTK overall, uh, is a lot easier than with some of these other weapons that maybe we're not as familiar with and not as comfortable with. So this one has that good old reliability of most of the Modern Warfare weapons that we've used for a while. It still has the consistency and it still has the competitiveness, even against some of these other better Cold War rifles that for the most part sort of dominate the category. So as far as the attachments go here, let's be real, this setup really has not changed in quite some time. However, there's a few different ways you can sort of kit out the AMAX that sort of just depends on how comfortable you are with the weapon itself. We start off with the monolithic suppressor. It's a no brainer. You stay off the radar. You get the better velocity and range. We go for the Zodiac barrel, best range and control. Lately, I've really been liking the TAC laser setup. Uh, this just makes it a tad bit faster. You still do have to deal with the recoil at some longer ranges, which of course, usually you wouldn't run the TAC laser, you'd run the commando foregrip instead. But if you can get that pattern down and if you're comfortable with your recoil control, which really in all reality, it is Call of Duty, it's still not that difficult. Uh, TAC laser is actually a pretty fun alternative because it does speed up the weapon a bit. Then we go for the basic 45 round mags, then also the VLK three times optic. And on that, I do like to run the T-Pose reticle as well. Then coming in at number four, I've got the Farah 83. This was the most popular weapon in Warzone history. Very quickly, a lot of players cut on to just how easy this weapon was to use before and also how effective it was as well. Uh, prior to this whole latest round of weapon tuning, the Farah's TTK was sort of in that mid range. It was not super fast compared to things like the AMAX or the C58, the AK, the XM4, so on and so forth, but it also was not super slow either. It was right there in the middle, but the thing just had no recoil whatsoever. And for that fact, everyone literally started using it. So it became the most popular weapon in Warzone history, I think outside of the DMR. And now, even though it did get nerfed and it's not gonna be as good as it was before, it is still incredibly, incredibly easy to use. And honestly, the TTK still is not that bad, especially if you are landing a headshot, maybe even two headshots and primarily landing chest shots as well. Of course, really a lot of this does come down to your aim and how much you can capitalize off a of weapon's potential and really, if you're missing a ton of shots, if you're landing extremity shots, you're not able to hit a ton of shots consistently. That's that's going to be the core of your issues there. Uh, you really just got to master these weapons, learn how to stay on target with them and whatnot. But despite the Pharah's lower TTK and lower damage compared to some of these other rifles, it still is very competitive because it is easy to use at the end of the day. The recoil nerf that it got is really non-existent. I mean, this thing is so basic and so simple to use, especially when you go ahead and you kit it out to help with some of that recoil control as well. This isn't really one of those faster rifles. This is primarily meant for those medium and longer range fights. So 
The versatility, not fantastic comparatively speaking, but overall, this is still one of the best rifles. Uh, we're starting off with the Gru Suppressor, basically the monolithic equivalent, but this does actually help with the recoil control as well. I still go for the RPK barrel. You are getting the best range and velocity out of that, as well as even more help with the recoil. You can go for the Spetsnaz grip if you really want to. I like that because it really does make this weapon feel like it has no recoil whatsoever. Uh, if you're fine with just the regular recoil, though, with just the barrel and uh, and the Gru Suppressor, you can go for something like a stock. Maybe you go for a rear grip, sort of up to you. And then on there, I also have the 60 round mag and then the three times optic to close things out. Now at number three, I've got the Krig 6 and I'm gonna keep it a buck. Uh, really, I think this is probably gonna be the most used weapon across the general player base because just like the Farah, it is incredibly easy to use. And because all these other rifles were nerfed and the Krig was actually buffed a bit, it is now actually very competitive in terms of TTK and its damage output, while also being a laser beam as well. Just like the Pharaoh, this thing has next to no recoil. On this one in specific, I don't even run a grip just because it's so easy naturally with just the other attachments you got on there. Of course, you can always add one on. It's going to make it even more of a laser beam and even easier to use. So if you are someone who struggles with recoil a bit, especially over range where you're using this weapon the most, uh, you know, a grip could totally be viable and, and could definitely help you out. But if you're a high skill player, if you know recoil patterns well and you can master them very quickly and easily, this weapon has a very high skill ceiling or a skill potential, I should say. Uh, the only reason it's not higher on this list is because the upcoming weapons, I would say, have an even higher uh, skill potential, right? So if you can really, really get them down and master them, you're probably going to do better with them. But overall, the Krig is a beast right now, which I think is funny because before it really wasn't anything all that special. It was a very mid-tier, mediocre rifle, but thanks to this buff and all the other nerfs, this thing really spiked up in popularity and also efficiency too. Uh, as far as the setup goes here, we once again have agency suppressor. We go for the mil spec barrel, the final barrel, best range, best velocity, best control. No grip, as I mentioned. I go for the 60 round mag because of course it is a rifle, the three times optic, and then finally the Raider stock. But then uh, with that one, you can sort of mess around. You could go for that rear grip yet again. You could go for an under barrel if you need. Sort of comes down to preference with that. Then following that at number two, I've got the C58. Currently, this is my favorite go-to weapon just because this thing is a powerhouse. This is, I would say, the closest thing that we have to the AMAX 2.0. Think the golden AMAX back in the day, probably the best ranged weapon that we've ever had in Warzone in terms of assault rifles. That was like the gold standard, right? Right now, I think the C58 with my current build is the closest thing we'll have to that. It's got that slower fire rate, but it's also got the insane power over range. It's got the great headshot multipliers. So again, if you are very accurate, this thing is going to be a lot better to use than say the Krig, which has slightly lower damage than this. So it really just comes down to if you're comfortable with a weapon that's slightly harder to use, you can actually really find success with this thing. Uh, it's going to be a beast. And it really, again, has that very high uh, potential in terms of what it can put out if you're an accurate player. So to close out the setups here, we are once again using the agency suppressor. We've got the task force barrel for all the same reasons as the RPK and all the other barrels we've talked about today. We've got the field agent grip because the recoil is pretty noticeable on this one. I also use the 55 round mag, but the 45 round mag also works just fine. You get a slightly faster ADS speed at the 45, really just comes down to preference. Then also the four times optic or the three times optic, again, more so preference based, whether you like the increased zoom or the better reticle, really just comes down to what you prefer. And then at number one, currently the best rifle in Warzone, in my opinion, I'm sure a few of you saw this coming. I've got the Cold War AK-47. And right away, I will say, compared to the Krig, it's a lot harder to use. The Krig is a vastly easier weapon. But like I said, the potential with the AK-47, I feel like is a lot higher than the Krig. That simply comes down to its potential TTK, and its potential damage output. If you are able to consistently land chest and headshots with this AK, you are going to fry. This thing has one of the best TTKs in the entire game, even after the nerfs with the latest updates. Uh, and it's also probably the most versatile rifle that we have on the list today. Uh, this thing can be built for close range, sort of as a sniper support option. It's probably the best sniper support option right now. Uh, it can be built for medium range specifically, or it can be built for medium and long range, which is more so what we're focusing on here today. But of course, as we've talked about numerous times on the channel already, there's a lot of different setups for this thing that can actually work really, really well. I enjoy using this weapon quite a bit. It is strong. It hits heavy like all around. If you are a good player, you can really capitalize just off of the potential that the AK-47 has and just how powerful it is at the end of the day. As far as this setup goes, like I said, we can go a few different ways. First and foremost, you got to be using that Gru Suppressor. Honestly, even at a range, you don't always need to run a barrel. I've seen multiple people run around with the AK and not use a barrel for a ranged, uh, for a ranged build. But obviously, if you really want to capitalize the most off of that range efficiency, you want to go for the RPK barrel, in my opinion. 
I've also got the Spetsnaz grip on there to help limit some of that recoil. This does have a bit more recoil than some of the previously mentioned guns. We also go for the 60 round mag, then the three times optic once more. So yeah, overall, those are what I would say are the top five rifles in Warzone currently. Although this entire category is definitely a lot more competitive after these nerfs. So you can certainly try out quite a few things. The M13, the Grau, the M4A1, the XM4, all still very competitive weapons. This category in general is pretty fun to mess around with right now, but that is gonna wrap things up for today. If you enjoyed the video or if you found it helpful, let me know by dropping a like on it. it would be seriously appreciated. And of course, if you are new to the channel and you want to stay up to date with everything going on in COD, news, updates, loadouts, everything like that, it is all right here. So feel free to subscribe with your notifications turned on. As always, if you want to check out any of my partners, be sure to use code IMMORTAL for a spicy discount on all Scuff, G Fuel, Gamer Advantage, and Control Freak products. And the links for all those can be found down in the description below. But once again, thank you so much for tuning in. And until next time, take it easy. Have an awesome rest of your day. And I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.